Hello my friends, my name is Betsy and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the process and the thinking that went into this drawing here. So the very first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to create a border for myself. The last time that I made a drawing of this size, I decided to go all the way to the edge of the paper and that did cause a little bit of frustration for me. I would also like to apologize for the occasional blurry images. I think my camera is trying to autofocus. I think I forgot to set it a little bit differently, but it should only do it a couple of times, but I do apologize for that. So when I got started with this drawing, I didn't really have a plan. And usually what that means for me is that I'm just going to start with a flower. It's a pretty familiar form makes it easy to just get started because I think that if I start making plans, if I start worrying about what it is that I want to draw, I kind of overthink things and I start getting a little bit stressed out. So in this scenario, I decided to just start with something simple, something familiar. So I just started with four petals and I created lines along the inner edge just to make it look like it's darker there. And then I just decided to keep going with those petals. I didn't have a plan. There was no plan about whether I was going to keep going, if, if I was just going to make a few of them. I could have decided to fill the entire page with petals, and that can be very striking. But at this point, I'm just creating, I'm just drawing lines, I already have a pattern that I'm familiar with. I'm just drawing petals. And it's at this stage that I start thinking about whether I want to start adding different elements. I could add some leaves. There are lots of different types of leaves that I could add. Simple ones, complex ones, something with lots of lines. I could add swirls, I could add circles. There's, there are always many decisions I could make at this point. But for now, I'm really only focusing on this one element. And I'm gonna continue adding lines along the, the inner edge of those petals just so it looks darker there. You can see that it's already giving the illusion of form. It doesn't look too flat anymore. And I think it's at this point that I start to think that that flower is big enough and that I want to start moving on to some other elements. And as I start moving towards the outer edge of the flower, I do start to change the size of my petals. I did decide to put a big one here. I just wanted to see what it would look like. There's no, no problem with experimenting a little bit. But as I started to reach the edge, where I, I felt it was the edge, I would make some of the petals just a little smaller. I find it more appealing when the shape of the flower is a little bit more like a nice circle. So things aren't jutting out too much. So I try to fill those areas in. And then I do this thing that I usually do, which is to create that dark line around the edge. This is going to create that border between the flower and whatever designs or elements I decide to add in after this. Now, I am going to work on a very particular design after this that I like to use in a lot of my drawings. And it can be a little bit complex. It can be a little difficult. But I'm going to do my best to explain to you how it is that I create this. And what this design is, is it's ribbons. And I always start off by using my pencil. Because this is going to create that outer edge. And I really need the help of that pencil right now. Then I'm going to come in with the pen. And do these curves. Starting at the bottom, heading up and along the edge. And if you pay close attention, you'll notice that those lines are not necessarily touching at the top. I am going to make a couple more of these, so you're welcome to rewind the footage, go back a little bit, and take a look at it again. But I am going to make a few more. And you'll be able to see in further detail how I do this. Now there is something particular about the way I draw these that's different from the way I've seen other people draw it. Most people just make a simple curvy line, and then they create those lines heading down from it, and everything just connects. But my line does not connect up at the top. There's just this little bit of gap. And what that's doing for me is that's giving the shape a little bit more thickness. If those lines were touching up at the top, 
That would mean that this shape is more like a paper. It's paper thin. So imagine if you took a piece of paper and you made a fan out of it. Or let's say you had just fabric and it's just hanging there like a curtain. If my lines went all the way to the end, that's what it would be. It would be like a curtain. But I don't want it to look thin like a curtain. What I want it to look, I want it to look like it's thicker, like it's maybe a plant or a coral. And so notice again how I draw the lines. I start at the bottom, cut it off, start again. The lines don't quite touch at the top. This is giving it some more thickness. And this isn't necessary. When you draw yours, you can just let all the lines touch. That's absolutely fine. I'm just explaining to you something that I do when I draw this that helps give it just a little bit more interest. And so I'm just erasing some of those lines that I created at the beginning. And so if you ever draw anything and you, you need to draw in pencil before you go in with that pen, do not be ashamed. We all do it. Everybody does it. There's a reason why we have tools. So a pencil is just another one of the tools in our little toolbox. Use it whenever you need to. It doesn't make you any less of an artist or any less creative or anything like that. It's okay. And so you'll notice that after I do that, once my main lines are in, I go in and I create these shadows. And I am being very careful here. With, with the rest of my drawing, I'm not this careful. I just notice that I really enjoy the look of this. If I use a smaller pen, so in this case I've switched over to a, a knockoff Micron pen. If you have Microns, you could use those. I think this is a size 0 0.1. Whereas the other pen that I was using was a 0 0.5, so it was a little bit bigger. So this one is smaller, and what I'm doing is I'm creating strokes that taper off. So when I first start the stroke, so each line that I make is darker at the beginning, so I'm using more pressure. And as I pull outward, I lower the pressure. I start to let go just a little bit. That way, the line becomes very thin. So notice it starts thick and it gets thin, and that's because I'm changing the pressure. I try not to be this careful with my lines. I try not to obsess this much over the lines, but I think that when I do this for this particular design, I really like the way it looks. So this is one where I really do this. If I just don't have the patience that day, I'm not going to do this at all. I'll choose something else. So if you decide to try this, give yourself some time. It might require some patience and it might take a couple of tries, but it does come out really nice. It is very rewarding just seeing the way that shadow just really makes it pop. I know that something that I've really wanted to do for a while is make an entire drawing full of just this one design. But so far I just haven't done it because I know it's going to be so much work and it's probably going to take up my my whole life for like a whole week, day and night. It'll take forever to finish it. So someday I might do it. It might look really nice. I'd really like to do it. It's just, I don't think I have the patience yet. So I just kind of put this throughout my other drawings a little bit here and there, just so I can enjoy it. And then maybe at some different time I'll have, I'll have the ability to create a larger one. So for now, I'm just going to add that thick line around the edge to separate this design from whatever comes next. Again, I have no plan. I haven't decided what it is that's coming. I'm kind of just deciding when I get there. And all of it is based around this central focus, which is this flower. That was the beginning of it, and everything else is just going to bloom outward from there. So usually I'll rotate it, I'll turn it around a little bit and just see what kind of things could fit in there. I decided to put this semicircle in here. Added another one just to see how it would look. And then decided to just add these diagonal lines. It makes it look a little bit like twisted rope. And then I decided to draw that dark line around the edge while I thought about what I wanted to put on the inside. And I ended up just going with these small loops. It's one of my favorite designs. It gives a lot of texture. 
It's just really satisfying. Watching each tiny loop appear. And you can see I just make these by making a small black teardrop and then adding a little loop around it and that completes it. And I just try to fit them in the best that I can. And so I'm just finishing that up right here, adding all the little loops in. Pretty pleased with that. And since I had this smaller area to the right, I just wanted to go ahead and fill that in. I knew that I was going to go all the way to the edge, so I just selected a few of my simpler designs that are just easy to put in there. And in this case, it's these small little swirls. They look like snails, and I really like to cluster them together like this. They look really cute. So I added a little group of those. And into this corner, I wanted something familiar, so I put in this petal shape. I think in my mind when I add these in. I don't think of them as petals exactly, but it is kind of what they look like. So I create this shape that looks like a petal and I add in some contour lines. And you'll notice that I am adding some extra lines along the inner edge. So the edge of the shape that's touching that circle that came before. This helps create that little bit of shading. I'm just using ink to make it look darker there. It ensures that everything looks like it has some dimensionality, so things don't look too flat. And in the tiny gaps, I'm just adding more elements, just small elements again. Simple ones, like little leaves, tiny circles. Just simple shapes that help fill in the gaps. Like more circles right here. And you'll notice that I am already starting to go in with that with the black around the edge, creating those dark, thick lines. Because I do know that at this point, when I get to the end, I'm going to add a lot of black around the edge. I like to do that. It helps frame the image. So here I'm just adding some, some tangling. It's very satisfying and easy to do. Lots of lines just hugging each other. Creates a lot of texture, a lot of dimension. And some of the lines that are touching the element before it, I try to make it just a little darker. Try to add more black just so that, I, so that it looks like there's a shadow there. Then I decided to move on to this one here. This is one of these curls that I like to do. And you'll see that I'm also adding contour lines to that one. So it doesn't look too flat. And then next to it, I didn't know what to do here. So I just put more petals there exactly like the ones that I put in that flower that I did at the very beginning. They still have a lot of appeal to them and they look really nice on the edge there. It helps fill up that space. So I seem to have a little gap there. So I decided to just add some more of these tiny teardrop shaped leaves. They're just gonna go in there and fill in. And I'm just thinking of all of this as I go. I, I'm attempting to not add more designs in. If it's too complicated, it's going to get harder and harder to work on. So I'm just sticking to some of the same designs. Now this one here is one that I like to do in a lot of my drawings as well. It almost looks like something from the ocean, something alive. You'll notice that I start with those same little teardrop shaped leaves that I use, except I'm setting them up in a very particular pattern. I start at one edge and I start in this case, I'm working to the left and I'm letting them hug each other very tightly. And I'm slowly working my way towards the left, letting them hug each other. This is going to look like some kind of coral or some creature like an anemone. And I let the shapes curve just a little bit. It almost makes it look like it's waving around in the water. I like doing this one a lot. So if you decide to try something like this, also know that this one might take a little practice. 
it can be challenging the first time you try it maybe even the first couple of times you try it it does come out really nice as well though you'll notice that I also added that dark line around the edge as I went since I knew it was already gonna be necessary I just went ahead and added it right off the bat and then after this because I again wasn't sure what to do I didn't have a plan I just added in a few more semicircles and those help create just some simple shapes for me to think about some ways to fill them for this one I just wanted to keep it simple I decided to go for circles and I varied the sizes of the circles so that it looked like around the edges it was darker so the circles are smaller and tighter so it looks a little darker there when I headed over to the second semicircle I decided to just uh, draw some long radiating lines so I picked a spot that looked like it might have been like the center of the circle if this were a complete circle and just drew lines heading out from there this ended up looking a little bit like a flower it wasn't the plan but it just looks like a flower so I just went with it and decided to clean up the edges so they look nice and added extra lines radiating out from the center to help give it some more depth right there and so I'm just going to work my way all the way out to the edge finish up the last petals there and I do apologize I think that this is one of those points where my hand was getting in the way so the camera was really trying to focus I don't think it happens too much just a couple of times but again I apologize I decided to grab my smaller pen and add some little lines along the edges there I think it helped give it some more some more dimension made it look almost like those petals were curved and so I decided to add another line here and just fill it with little circles it's almost like a row of beads or pearls and it just helps add that little bit of detail a little more interest just more shapes and forms to look at and of course I am doing this for relaxation for fun just so that I can have some time to myself some quiet time in my study and so I want to take my time I'm not going to worry about the end result you'll notice that I'm adding more of those same elements that I'd had in there before just the same ones I don't want to make any more decisions I've already made plenty so I'm just going to keep adding some more of the same after I add my contour lines in I add a few extra lines along the inner edge again it's a, it's like adding a shadow there making it slightly darker in the corner I add some more of those swirls that I had on the other side of the drawing really brings everything together and I make that dark line because I know I'm gonna fill the edge with black so I'm just setting that up right now So as I work my way around this edge, I'm just going to add very, very small elements. Just a circle here and there, small leaves here and there, nothing complicated. I've already done all of the big complicated shapes and I don't want to make anything else that's complicated. I'm just going to finish up these contours and add those extra lines along the inner edge. Notice how I always draw that thick black line every time. I always need that division there. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to add that thick line. It's just what I like to do so that I create this kind of look. So as I finish up this edge, I'm just adding some circles, some tiny shapes. 
just cleaning it up, finishing it off. Now when I come in around the edge right after this, I'm going to use a different pen. I'm not going to use this one. Of course, it would take absolutely forever. And I do that some I will do that sometimes. I will use my small gel pen to fill in those spaces. I think that's especially when I really need to reset my mind. But in this case, I don't need that. So I'm going to come in with a different pen. It is a type of watercolor pen. I believe I also found these on Amazon and they do fill in really nicely and they also don't bleed through the paper too much. I'll have to go looking for it, but I will make sure to link this in the description in case any of you are interested in anything like this. But at this point, you can fill in these spaces with anything you've got. If you have a permanent marker, if you have any other kind of pen, you might have something lying around. I know some people like to use watercolor that might work here just fine. Any ink, if you have any ink bottles and you like to use a brush to fill in spaces, you could do that here too. You don't have to buy anything new. These just work really well for me, so I like to use them along the edge, and I believe they weren't too expensive. I'll look up the price later, and I'll, I'll make sure to link it. So here it is. This is the end result. Here's what it looks like, and at this point I haven't even added any shading. It's just the ink. I will probably digitize this and see if I can play around with it later to add color or just some shading. I like to do that once I get over to my iPad. But at this point, this is perfect for going in my journal. And I'm really glad that you joined me here today. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you in the next one.